Weeks. Welcome back to Project Anonymous and in today's video, we're going to make a fancy bowl holder for Daisy. So let's get to it. So we're just going to elevate her food and water bowls using a free software boxes.py to kind of create something that we can use for this. And we're going to customize it to make it look like a water and food bowl holder. So should we get to the project? Let's go. Okay, so here are Daisy's bowls. And what we want to do is build a platform that kind of raises them up so she doesn't have to lean over all the way. So getting the distance right is, that's going to be a challenge, I think. I think if we raise it up about three and a half inches, that should be good. And then obviously we are going to want to measure the bowls themselves so that we know how big the hole needs to be. But we don't want to make it like, like right now it's, it's five and a half inches wide here, but we don't want to make the hole in our platform five and a half inches or these will just fall through. So we actually have to account for this little lip here. So we use our calipers to get the measurement of the diameter that we want for that hole. And then we're going to use the boxes.py website to download a box that we can modify for this project. So these are our tests with our atom stack laser that we're going to use to get our configuration for our engraving and our cutting right. So we're at the boxes.py website and we've input the measurements that we want we went ahead and picked just a simple open box because we're gonna end up flipping it upside down and using the bottom of this box as the top where we're gonna put our holes for our bowls. Just another key tip here, the measurements are in millimeters, so make sure you're converting if you're measuring in inches first like we were. For the bottom edge, because uh, we want it to be kind of flush versus the picture here, this shows where it's kind of recessed into the wood, we want it to be flush towards the end. So we went ahead and changed this to a finger joint bottom edge. Uh, we put the thickness of the wood we're gonna use. We're gonna use our standard five millimeter, which is quarter inch ply. And we wanna output this as a light burn project. And that's it. So we're just going to download this light burn file and import it into our light burn. Okay, so here it is. I'm gonna go ahead and select everything and flip it upside down. Hit this arrange and flip vertical. And make sure you do all of that because you don't want to mess up by only flipping one of them if you're gonna flip it at all. But the reason I flipped it is because this is now our bottom edge that we're gonna use. And this is obviously the top of our box. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put those circles in for cutouts for the bowls. So now what I want to do is I kind of want to make a little arc here just to make this look a little bit more finished rather than just having a flat edge all along the bottom. I kind of wanted to make an arc uh, along the bottom edges of this stuff. So I'm going to use some boxes just as kind of reference points uh, to make sure I get my spacing right all along. So I realized here that these are exactly the same. So there's really no need to kind of do this process again. They're just replicas of each other. So I just copied and pasted and deleted the other one. So it's going to be the same deal with this here and this here. So I'll just have to do this arc once and then I can just duplicate the finished product. So we'll go with that. And the reason I'm not getting the ability to cut this Boolean path right here, see it's disabled. I have to close this. So when it's created, I'm not really sure if it's like actually a closed path. So there might be like a little opening. So I'm gonna just use the tool here to close the path and that usually makes it work. If it doesn't, or if this is grayed out for you, you may want to ungroup it if it was showing as a grouped product. So right now it's, it's not grouped and it looks like it's gonna work for me. So I'm gonna close that path. And now when I select both of these, I can actually cut the shape out. 
just like that. And now I can delete these little reference squares. That looks pretty good. So again, I'm gonna copy it. Okay, so we have it designed. I think this is gonna turn out pretty neat. Of course, we had to put Daisy's face on the side and then her name on the front so she knows it's hers. Okay, so all we need to do now is configure the laser and get this set up for the cutout. It should be pretty quick. So we're gonna, again, uh, utilize the test and settings that we got from our first project with the Atom Stack, and we're just gonna adjust our settings here. So for our cutout here, we're gonna set this to 500 millimeters per minute. We'll do this for at 100%. And we wanna do three passes just to be sure it cuts all the way through this quarter inch ply. And that's gonna be good for our cutout. And then for our engraving settings, this atom stack actually engraves really fast. So we're gonna do 9,000 at 80% and 0.01 interval, one pass count. And that should give us uh, good results for the engraving. So with that, let's go ahead and start cutting. So obviously for this project, this is bigger than our workspace. So we're not gonna be able to do this all in one step. And frankly, I think I wanna do this piece by piece anyway. So we have this feature cut selected graphics on, uh, which basically means I need to highlight what I want to engrave or cut out. And that's honestly, that's worked the best for us. So we can go through this and do it individually. And I can start from our current position of what we're selected. So you can see here, this little green button is at the top corner and then I can set the laser at the top corner of our piece so that we can use just the amount of wood that we want and where we want. Okay, so we got our first piece cut out, I did have to run another pass. So we're gonna change our settings to four passes so we can ensure that this actually comes out cleanly along the way. But yeah, we got a pretty clean cut. All right, off to the next piece. Okay, so everything cut out successfully. Everything seems to look like it's gonna fit, so that's good. Now we're just gonna do some light sanding to get kind of this soot off of the surface there and hopefully not ruin our wood or engraving. So let's get this sanded. So I think the results turned out really cool and I hope Daisy will like it. 
I'm sure she will. But we did notice something about how the tolerances fit. Yeah, we made it honestly too tight. So we were test fitting it together and we really couldn't get it apart without ruining it. So we just decided to allow it to be a friction fit and not put any glue on there. Now, the reason for that is we didn't adjust the kerf in boxes.py because we went with the default that was in there that works perfectly with our X-Tool machine, but the Atom Stack laser actually has a smaller kerf laser. So it was making it so that the tolerances were really tight. So ideally in the future, if we were to do this again, we would just adjust it so that there's a little bit more space so that we can kind of test fit things together and then obviously add some glue. But honestly, the friction fit is enough. It, this thing's not coming apart. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on notifications so you get reminded every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.